Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar today on ozone technology for wine enhancement and smoke taint removal. We're glad you all could join us today from uh, all over the world, and uh, we should uh, uh, hopefully have some interesting information for you today. My name is Christian de Blasio. I'm the CEO of Pure Fresh Wine. Our company is based in San Francisco, California. Uh, myself and my company have been involved in ozone applications for fresh fruit and fresh produce for over 15 years, designing custom applications for all types of fresh, perishable uh, fruit and vegetable um, goods around the world. We've uh, recently, for the last several years, been working with uh, wineries and universities around the world to develop specific applications for wine grapes, and that's what we're here to talk to you about today. Thank you for attending. These are some of the common questions that we see surrounding ozone use with wine grapes. And these are the questions that we'll answer today. And additionally, at the end, should you have any questions, please uh, type them in the uh, guest group chat or the questions and answers chat section you can find on your Zoom menu bar. Here are the questions we'll talk about today. What are the results and impacts of ozone treatment applied to wine grapes? How does the process work? What is the chemical interaction of ozone and smoke taint molecules? What is the typical treatment plan and cost implications? What are the impacts and results of ozone treated versus non-treated smoke tainted grapes? And how does a winery get started to use these systems? This is a summary list of all the implications that wineries are seeing around the world as they start to use more and more ozone systems on harvested grapes, pre-crush, pre-fermentation. It's quite a long list and we've never seen any negative impacts to using these systems, only positive impacts. As long as you can manage the, the timing of the ozone treatments, the level of the ozone treatments along with dynamic control of temperature and humidity and airflow, you can ensure that any ozone treatments to your wine grapes are all kept in the positive column. These are some of the results you would normally see. Uh, ozone will remove field applied sulfur, pesticides and fungicides. It will also, using ozone, uh, will also reduce the need for the amount of SO2 you need to add to your wine after the fermentation product and before bottling. You'll see a reduction in bad bacteria and bad mold issues such as Brett bacteria. You'll see fermentation benefits with less bacteria and microbes in the fermentation because of the ozone. You'll see uh, avoidance of stuck fermentations, smoother fermentations, and faster fermentations in some cases. One of the other nice benefits is when any, anyone uses ozone systems, you would always control the temperature at the same time, which means wineries and winemakers can control the temperature that the grapes enter fermentation. Winemakers can choose the exact temperature after the ozone treatment that the, that the grapes will actually enter fermentation. Most winemakers find this a, a very nice benefit to have. You'll see a risk reduction across all of the food safety sectors. Things that the produce industry has seen for years can be avoided. E. coli, salmonella, listeria, all components that are eliminated by ozone. You'll see an improvement in the roundness and fruit forward palate notes, which we have more information for you to show you today. You'll see an increase, a modest uh, beneficial increase in the, the total content of tannins, anthocyanins and still beans in the wine. You'll also see, which is piquing a lot of people's interest around the world, you'll see a reduction in smoke tank molecules, pre-crush, pre-fermentation. A lot of benefits and a lot of wineries using these systems today for individual benefits that mean the most to their wineries. This is a lot of what people like to see. How do you use ozone? How do you treat grapes? How does it work? Uh, the most modern systems around the world today are mobile systems. Because of the timeline of harvest and really only using these on wine grapes when you harvest them, it's important for cost effectiveness to have systems that are mobile. 
something that can treat small to large volumes of wine grapes, but also something that's mobile and can be brought in for the harvest and removed afterwards. These systems are generally 40 foot powered refrigerated controlled uh, uh, containers with ozone ad adaptation systems uh, inserted into the container itself that works with the container. These systems can control temperature, humidity, ozone levels, airflow. Uh, they all generally work off of a single plug-in 480 volt three-phase power plug. Most wineries have this power equipment. The treatment time um, to treat anywhere from minimum five tons of wine grapes to a maximum of 30 tons is 24 hours. So with one system, in this case, the Pure Fresh Titan system, you can treat anywhere from five tons to 30 tons in a single 24 hour treatment session. If you need to treat more than that, you would simply use two of these Titan 40 foot container systems. There's on demand ozone generation with high airflow. This is the key. Uh, just applying ozone in a box or ozone in a room is not going to treat the wine grapes. Heavy, heavy airflow that can exchange air between 50 and 70 times per minute that is chimney flow directed through the grapes can power the air and the ozone up through the individual bunches and berries of grapes. This is what makes ozone effective in a high airflow environment. The things that um, you would really want to have in these types of systems is remote control, remote recording, so that after the treatment is done, you have multiple sensor points to know exactly how much ozone all of your grapes were treated with. These are what systems like the Pure Fresh Titan system can do. In the, in the top right, you'll see some of the, the size of the bins that are used. Generally around the world, the wineries, either through the, uh, their partners or bin vendors would replace solid side, solid bottom bins with bins that have small aeration holes in the bins to let the ozone and the air flow through. If you don't have these bins, they're readily accessible for many different harvest bin companies for lease or temporary lease or for, for long-term purchase. Again, another view of the system and uh, how you can apply ozone to treat your wine grapes. Again, the mobile 40-foot Titan system. Um, they can treat up to 54 harvest bins in one treatment, which would get you up uh, just about to 30 tons of grapes. Uh, their chimney forced airflow there are 24 hour treatment cycles. So you put the grapes into the container, you leave them in there for a 24 hour treatment. Then at the end of the treatment, you remove the grapes, you put them into crush and ferment and you take a next set of harvested grapes into the container for treatment. All of these systems must have dynamic sensor control. You have to be able to not only make ozone, but sense and manage the control level of the ozone every single minute that your grapes are in the container. Too little ozone will not do enough to help your wine. Too much ozone could damage your wine. Now we are starting to talk about the chemical interaction of ozone with your wine grapes. On the left-hand side, you'll see information about the chemistry of what happens to the grape itself. Grape, wine grapes, as you all know, most of which thrive on stress, whether that's stress from the land, stress from the sun, or stress from the weather. When wine grapes experience stress, they naturally create things to defend themselves, which is what makes wine so wonderful. Things like tannins and anthocyanins are developed and increased by the grape itself the more it needs to defend itself. A lot of these attributes, the self-defense of the grape, are what makes the ozone treatment such a nice balanced reaction for the grape on a very modest, small scale. This is what's increasing in your wine, the tannins, long-term color stability through an increase in anthocyanins, and palate notes that are more commercially viable in this day and age for selling in the worldwide marketplace your wines. Things such as uh, fruit forward roundness, particularly in, in big red wines that many consumers are looking for in this day and age. So there's a lot of chemistry, there's a lot of information, We'll talk a little bit at the end of the presentation, but there are many, many university studies from Italy to France to Australia to the United States that cover these topics on a factual basis. On the right-hand side, 
you'll see the information about the chemistry interaction of smoke taint molecules. The fundamental understanding of the removal of smoke taint or the removal of pesticides or fungicides or sulfur is that ozone is, has a free oxygen molecule. And this molecule is always looking to bond with carbon or hydrogen. All smoke taint molecules, all chemicals like pesticides and fungicides have plenty of hydrogen or carbon available to bond with the ozone. This is what allows ozone to lose one of its oxygen molecules and bond and rip apart the chemical molecules such as a smoke tank molecule. This is the formal reaction on the right-hand side of what happens at the end of the reaction of ozone with a smoke tank molecule. It ends up as one of these four acids in your ferment, most of which is all burned off in the ferment. This is another look of the actual chemistry behind the product. If you talk to many wine experts, wine industry labs, and universities that study winemaking around the world, they'll always tell you the same thing. When you look at treatments for your wine, always look at the science, always look at the chemistry of that treatment. Ozone has excellent chemistry, excellent facts behind what it does for wine. This is an example of the chemical reaction of ozone with guaiacol. Guaiacol is one of the main molecules measured around the world to understand the impacts of how much smoke your grapes may have experienced during a season where there's wildfires near or in your vineyard. Uh, in this example, you'll see that ozone will bond with free available carbon-carbon bonds of the guaiacol molecule, breaking open the molecular ring and destroying the smoke tank molecules. You'll see this this reaction repeated with almost all smoke tank molecules and other chemicals applied in the field to your grapes. There's always questions about cost and revenue implications. How much do systems like ozone applying them to your wine grapes cost? Is it worth it? Is there value for you or for your winery? Is there value for the wine that you're going to sell someday? The answer in most cases is always yes. If you look at a typical winery around the world that might harvest as much as 400 tons, which is equal to about 720 bottles of 750 milliliter bottles, you'll see that if just in the grapes alone, the amount of grapes that it takes to, to produce this wine, you'll see in the grape value sales itself, a value increase of about long-term $1,200 per ton of grapes or $1.67 per bottle of wine sales. Most of this value does not simply come from the sales of the grapes. It comes from the year after year performance of your wines. Things like reducing your declassifications, reducing the amount of blending that you have to do, reducing the amount of wine that you then declassify and sell as bulk to someone. All of these implications, such as holding up your classifications of your varietal, avoiding more common declassification year after year, this will lead to the main value benefits that you would like to see at your winery. The long-term overall cost of these types of systems, when you're producing 400 tons and processing the 400 tons in uh, one month into a system such as this, has a cost implication of $65 per ton. So it's very reasonable. Even at half this tonnage, at 200 tons of grapes, you're still looking at a cost that's less than $100 a ton to manage an ozone system uh, for your harvest season. All of those facts and figures are for a standard harvest. What's even more interesting is looking at the value and the savings and the revenue implications of using ozone systems when you do have a smoke event that could damage or ruin your entire vintage. This is where the math becomes more simple. Smoke tainted impact customers can save. They can save almost their whole harvest. Harvested grapes in certain parts of the world, especially big reds, valuable grapes, can have a value of at or over $3,800 per ton. If you had this type of level of example of wine at this type of value or this type of value of your grapes, you could save 400 tons in your, in your vineyard and you could avoid a $1.5 million loss just of, of those wine and grapes themselves. Obviously, there's a lot of cost implications. It will change based on your situation, your winery, your varietals, and your tonnages. Again, if you have any questions, 
We'd be happy to answer them at the end of the presentation, or you're more than welcome to follow up with us afterwards. One thing that we'll keep pointing to today is, is always looking at the chemistry and always looking at the science behind what we do. One of the best studies produced in the world to date was produced in, 2000, in March of 2021 by AWRI coming out of Australia. This study looked at in the lab environment, uh, Malbec grapes smoked to a significant extent. They had a control group of Malbec grapes that were not smoked. They looked at what does the impact of ozone do to the, do to the overall long-term flavor and palate notes and sensory impacts of the wine. If you look at the graph on the right, this, the, the solid black center line is the control performance. The solid black center line in terms of fruit, palate notes, burning palate notes, ash or medicinal palate notes, the solid black line is the pro forma, that is the control. If you look at the different levels of colors and lines and different levels of ozone and performances that these laboratory studies analyzed, you'll see that um, smoke tainted grapes that were treated at one part per million for 24 hours, which is the red line, is the one single treatment that was able to bring back all of the palate notes closest to the original control pro forma palate note taste. This was an excellent study. If you have not seen this study, we'd be happy to send you a copy of this note, of this, of this science article that was published in 2021. Additional analysis, customer performances. In this day and age, there's many types of laboratories for you to send your wine to. The traditional laboratories that can understand the tannins and anthocyanins on a volume basis in any wine you produce or in the grapes themselves. Also in this day and age, there are more and more labs that are opening in California, in Australia, in South America that will actually analyze how do the aspects of your wine match for consumer performance. Meaning if you have a wine in Chile or if you have a wine in Argentina or you would like to sell that wine in France or in Texas, what will that consumer group like the most? What kind of wine does a consumer group in a certain part of the world want to see? Here are some examples of that. Analyzing grapes that were treated, that were smoke tainted and then treated with ozone systems, looking at how the wines changed with the ozone treatment in a customer per per performance perspective. You can see on the left that the untreated grapes are to the far side of the consumer bell curve. The idea in these studies is to get yourself to the center. When, when your treated wine has aspects such as total tannins, in this example, towards the center, it means that more consumers will prefer that wine and go back and buy more. On the right side, you'll see the measurements of lactic acidity in the wines. And again, you'll see wines that were not treated that had smoke implications are on the far outside, far right of the bell curve where very few people are going to prefer or go back and buy that wine as opposed to the ozone treated grapes at the top center of the curve, the most valuable point in this analysis for what consumers are looking for. One more way to look at the wines and, and how they can be studied at laboratories today for consumer compatibility is to look at their preferences. Those same two wines that we showed you on the prior page are here displayed in a different graphic form on this page. What you'll see here is that the yellow circle, the, the grapes that were treated with ozone, will then match almost a 30% approval rating from clients that would consider this wine in their top 15 wines of things that they would buy, as opposed to the small orange circle, which is a very, very small percentage of consumers that would actually prefer to buy this wine. A lot of winemakers around the world, they want to know if they're going to try ozone treatments on their grapes, what work has been done, what wineries have used these systems, and what do the winemakers say? More and more every year, winemakers have been experiencing uh, making wine with ozone treatments to the grapes pre-crush. Now that these systems have been in place in the world for over two years, we now have been building a book of feedback from winemakers that now has wine over two years old in the programs. 
These are some of the commentaries that you'll see from winemakers. They can't argue with the results and they would use the system again. As a winemaker, I would personally use this technology again if needed. Other, other uh, wine comments such as, this can nudge or push the wines towards a more appealing and more approachable style. This means that more consumers will like the wine. Some of these wineries are small. Some of these wineries are expensive. Some of these wineries are very large and popular, such as the Tao Wine, wine Group, Gunlock Bunshu in Sonoma, California. There's lots of feedback. If you don't know a winemaker that has used ozone, please contact us. We'd be happy to put you in touch with a winemaker that has used ozone. Well, this reaches towards, this brings us towards the end of our presentation. Again, everyone would always like to know what wineries, what companies out there are using ozone today. And here's a little uh, look at the, some of the companies around the world that are using the um, ozone systems for treatment of wine grapes today. Getting started. Um, a lot of winemakers ask us, what are the next steps? What can I do if I want to use these systems? Just with a couple of bullet points, the first thing we always recommend is review science and university papers and studies. The data is in the science and the science matters. There's many reports in this day and age from, from around the world, from North America, from Europe, from Australia, New Zealand, that advocate the use and explain the chemistry and science of applying ozone to wine grapes. We highly recommend that you, you gather and read as much of this science and laboratory information and white papers that you can find. Again, if you'd like to have more, we have plenty to send to you, please contact us. Look at your harvest calendar. Look at when you what might need a system. It's always good to have a system like the Pure Fresh Titan system at your property delivered four to seven days prior to when you start harvesting grapes. That gives you time to test the system, practice with the system, and make sure that everything is running smoothly for when harvest starts. Again, any other questions, last and final, in terms of what you can do to get started, please contact us. The best email to get in touch with our company is winesales at purefresh.com. We're happy to pass along more information, more science papers, or just understand more questions about your winery. If there's any questions, we'll just take a minute to uh, review the questions and answers uh, chat screen. If you have any questions, please add them there. One question that we've seen is how long does it take to receive an ozone treatment system? The answer can vary depending on your location. Most all ozone treatment units, such as the Pure Fresh Wine Titan system, are, are, are prepared and trucked out of ocean port areas. This means if you're in Argentina, the uh, ozone system could be del delivered from either Valparaiso, Chile, or Buenos Aires, Argentina. If you're in Central Australia, these wine systems might be delivered to you from Sydney, from Brisbane, or from Melbourne, Australia. Well, thank you all for your time today. Please, please contact uh, our company, myself personally, or anyone at, at Pure Fresh Wine. Again, if you'd like to uh, get in touch with us or learn more, uh, please contact us at winesales at purefresh.com. Thank you and have a good day.